It's been quite a while, so we'll try to get everybody up to speed. Any questions, just to ask or if I missed something here. Oh, looks the last session is not. Um, it was a pretty heavy um, RP or plot dump sort of session to kind of get everybody on the same page of what's going on. Let's see. You guys started in Valakai after um, what? Somebody instigated with uh, Isaac, the uh, main head of the guard people there ended the last game before with a little bit of a tense situation with him. Things picked up with you guys all on the streets with him. Um, he was headed over to deal with Vasily who got thrown off the cart. When the Burgomaster Velakovich came out, sort of calmed the situation, introduced himself, thanked you all for bringing the wine, made sure that Isaac was not going to busy himself with such menial tasks as dealing with yourselves and dealing with the wine, basically sent him off, invited all of you guys into yeah, meet with them, have a bite to eat, smoke a cigar, have a bit of wine, and so he could basically show you how awesome he is. Um, took you into his den. He had this huge, massive, dire bear there, one that you guys had kind of battled like before. Told a story about how he was able to jump upon the beast and give it in a chokehold and take it out all by himself. Um, he was looking to have Mud share some stories as well. Looked like he was more of a bravado sort of challenge, but. Um, brought in some food and stuff. You met, well, sort of met his wife, Lydia, who's this tall, pale woman. Looks very nervous and sort of, uh, I don't know, odd or, or not very comfortable in her own skin sort of thing. And she seemed to be having some sort of meeting with a bunch of other ladies in a side room. They were all putting together these huge bundles of sticks and shaping them out like suns. And he mentioned it was for the festival of a burning sun. And with that, everybody was planning to put these things around the city and basically in this coming weekend and have this big blazing sun festival that would help to uh, cheer the mood of the people and keep the devil at bay. Um, let's see, the festival of blazing sun is in three days. He wants you guys to speak at this festival and be a part of it. I believe you were all going to put on a bit of a show, which he was very excited about. And thinks that would be wonderful to help cheer up the people. I was fully lying when I suggested that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, he holds you to it now. He thinks this is a wonderful idea, and this will make the people smile and dance. Um, but yeah, that's in three days. He expects you there. In the meantime, though, he was going to cover. You could stay in his uh, guest house if you would like, or you could pay for a room at the festival or the, the Blue Water Inn. But he mentioned that there was a lot of... Uh, Vistani that were currently staying there. It seems like they were quite interested in the festival as well and were coming into town in anticipation of it. Um, let's see. We're finally able to get the hell out of his house. He did see his son was in the hallway, I believe, the ceiling maybe. You stepped out into the hallway and saw him, but he looked familiar. You're not quite sure what, but it was sort of like this younger Victor that you were looking at. I mean, you can definitely see they're, I mean, they're different people, but the resemblance is quite striking. Um, he took off around the corner and closed the door, so you weren't really able to talk to him very much before you guys headed out. Um, he headed down to the Blue Water Inn to speak with Erwin Martikov and Dana, the two patrons of the bar or the tavern. He did learn eventually after he got everything settled down and the place quieted down a little bit, took you out back and basically plotted up a whole bunch of different facts for you guys. Um, he is part of the Martikov family. He is the son of Davian Martikov, who runs the winery. Um, you guys brought back the last wine barrels that were there with a note from his brother, which he gave to him, and he read through it. was like an encrypted thing. And he basically kind of got you guys up to speed on this um, Keepers of the Feather, they're called. It's sort of a secret uh, group of were ravens of which his family's sort of the patriarchs of Davi in particularly but they are all this uh, guild of were ravens that are essentially trying to somehow dethrone or get rid of the devil uh, let's see what different things did he give you here um the winery was originally owned by the kreskov family the martikovs married into it eventually took it over um, the kreskovs left eventually founding their own town the town of kresk which is further west, and the Martikov took over the winery. That was before the devil arrived, which was roughly 400 years ago. 
Um, when the devil arrived, well, before the devil arrived, the winery was given three gem seeds, they're called. They are these pine cone looking gems that are planted in the earth and they caused the vineyards to grow an abundance of grapes of uh, exceptional flavors. When the devil eventually did arrive and this whole land fell into darkness without sun, the gem seeds are what kept this winery thriving. It didn't, the plants there did not need the sun. They were fed off of these gem seeds. Um, they were, it was a gift from the Druids who eventually lost themselves and now believe that Strahd or the devil is their god. Uh, Dian and Erwin had a falling out. Erwin was supposed to be on watch one evening when he left his post to instead go hang out with Danica. During that time, one of the seed gems were stolen. They have no idea who, what, or where it went. That ended up calling that northern vineyard to die off. And then three weeks ago, a second gem was stolen by a hag that calls herself Mother, also known as Baba La Saga. They're not sure what she has done with it, but surely something awful. And that would be the western vineyard, which when you guys arrived there was looking pretty sickly. And then the third gem, the final one, was stolen three days ago. That was the day before you arrived to the winery, where the druid's leader, the guy that you were battling with, a werebear, he's the one that stole it. Then they came back basically to destroy the winery, which is when you all arrived. That gem, he believes, was taken to a place called Yester Hill, which is a druid circle or a druid grove to the west of the winery up on top of a hill. Um, Yester Hill is well, northwest of the winery. It is surrounded by carns and graves of the Druids and has a Stonehenge in the center with a great wooden statue of Strahd. And it, overlook, it is overlooked by a bleeding tree that moans and wails like a million tortured souls. Uh, let's see, Erwin believes that an ancient relic known as the holy symbol of Ravenkind was taken there by Strahd centuries ago and buried within the roots so that no mortal could reach it. Um, Erwin wants to get the symbol back for his guild or, or the keepers of the feather who believes that it has some sort of importance of destroying or removing Strahd from this land. Though he has no idea what exactly or what it really even is. He's just heard rumors of it. Um, beyond that, he told you that the town of Valakai has a festival every single weekend. He believes that Burgo Master Falakovich is basically just an old corrupt fool who thinks he's stronger, better, and smarter than the devil, but he's rather just arrogant and vain, that he's going to lead the town to ruin. He also mentioned that Mother Wachterhaus, which is the two brothers that you met at the tavern a while ago and you mistook for Mother Hag for a little while, is also tr sort of vying for power in the town. She wants to take over as the Burgomaster. Um, he said that she's not really much better. She does understand the, um, the wrath that the Burgomaster Kerwin is bringing down upon it in the town, and she wouldn't really lead it to the ruin of that sort, but she herself is quite a tyrant and would rule with the Iron Fist and would basically bring the town to ruin herself in that way. So it was really not really paying off one way or another. Um, that was pretty much a recap of all the different little info and bits that he gave you. I actually have a document I'll link after the session that has all that in there because all sorts of little nuggets are in there. Um, that's when you guys all heard a bit of a ruckus going on in the tavern behind you. So when you guys entered, there was some people from the church coming in, and you could see Father Lucian rushes in, and he was saying that the boy is in the clock tower. And then you would see, uh, oh, geez, um, Irina and what's her brother's name? Is it, or no? What the hell is her brother's name? It's been so long. Uh, Ishmar. Is, is, yeah, something like that. Um, Ismar, there we go. Ismar the Lesser. Isn't it Ishmar? Or Ismar. Okay. Ismar yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you would see Ismar and Irina that were entering and they were running towards you. You could see Irina was pretty uh, upset about something. Ismar was trying to calm her down. And that is where we ended the session. So, try to cover everything there. Any last things you guys want to add or questions or anything to get everybody up to speed? I got my special cigar. Oh, yes, you do. <laughs> Your hallucinogenic cigar. <laughs> Some good shit. Yeah, that was pretty much all I could I could think of. All right. There's a step there. Let me just swap over to today's notes, and we will get started here. Maybe in the All right. 
So it will be late evening by the time you guys are getting back in after speaking with Erwin. I think maybe 10, 11 o'clock in the evening. Everybody was pretty much set to sleep in this town. You will see as you step in here, a group of 10, 12 people, you would have recognized them all as people who were working at the church before um, when you visited for a short while. They all have their basic uh, church gowns on and stuff. They look like they've just woken up pretty sleep. Uh, sleepy looking on their faces and Father Lucien will come in behind them as he's speaking to um, the Burgomaster Volakovich, the two of them sort of in hushed tones over to the side, but you can see this really panicked look on Father Lucien as he's looking between these people and um, a lot of you guys as well as speaking with the Burgomaster. The Burgomaster in any case does not seem too impressed about whatever it is they're talking about in the corner sort of stands there, this huge frumpy form. He's got his nightgown on, a little top cap, and looking quite uh, lazily at this priest. Irina and Ismark will come in, and they'll look around for a few moments and then rush over to the lot of you. You can see she's been crying lately. Um, her eyes are just patched red, streaked, and Ismark follows her over. And she says, ah, I'm so glad that the lot of you could, 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 could get here back in time. I know you left a few days ago. I didn't... Get a chance to catch up with you when you arrived. Uh, your trip was well, I hope, yes? Oh, we only, we didn't permanently die or anything. <laughs> Always the jokester. That's what I need right about tonight. Did you hear what happened? Is this the joke? <sighs> I wish it was. You know that strange fellow, that, that grave digger? You remember him? Did you meet oh, him? Oh, yes. I was quite not very fond of him. He was a bit uh, creepy, I suppose you could say. I had to make a very expeditious retreat away from him. He says, well, you won't have to do that again. Go he hangs by his neck from the bell tower. He says he... Self-inflicted, or was he judgment, judged and found wanting? I do not know. I... Every evening he rings the tower at 10 o'clock. You all would have heard it go off each evening that you've been there anyway at 10 o'clock, sort of a signature for the town to go to bed sort of thing. He says, the bells that I rang this evening, once, twice, and then they wouldn't end. They droned out, ringing. I, I, I was curious to what has happened. I mean, the boy was a bit strange, but I was hoping that all was well. And I went out, I... Father, Father Lucian, he stood there, just staring at the boy as he hung, swinging back and forth, back and forth. His Did own they body. Him up there? He, he said that he was to be left there until until Isaac could dig him down. That that is why Father Lucian came down. She'll sort of motion over the side where he's talking to the Virgo Master. Says I. The sight was was horrid. He was as if somebody just flayed the skin from his bones. He says it, it was just a million little cuts across his entire body. Hmm. That's weird. Has he been cut down yet? It's just, no, Father Lucian insisted that he be left until Isaac could take care of the situation. Let's go take a look. Splendid plan, the ceiling. Says, I must stay here. I, I do not want to see that again. And his mark will sort of lead her to the side before coming back over. Says, I, I, I seen it myself as well. And he was, it was like somebody took a knife to his skin over and over and over. Just small, you know. If, if, I wasn't mistaken, it almost looks like writing, but I, I don't understand, like, like something Ooh. carved of ruins or something. I have to take a look at this. I'm going to, just going to start heading off towards the, the bell tower. Do be safe. This Isaac is up there now, along with several of the guards. Well, then I, I should be perfectly fine, I say, as I'm walking now. He will head over to Irina. Father Lucian will sort of 
look in your direction as you head out, but he doesn't really say anything. He seems quite preoccupied with uh, the Burgo master at the moment. What about Victor and Mornak? What do you guys do? Mornak's going to go ahead and follow uh, Vasily. <clears throat> Victor's going to as well, but I'm going to walk next to Mornak and be like, you know, you should probably wait just a few more seconds before trying to get that bird out of his pocket. How did you know why I was going? Because you were kind of obsessed with it before, so. <laughs> you guys can all kind of step out into the night. You can still hear this every now and then the gong is presume the body's still swaying up there in the bell tower. It'll sort of a sob, it's not loud at all, but as the bell strikes the gong every now and then. What You'll hear this heavy kid? footfalls behind you. Uh, go ahead, Mark. What, what's this kibitz about a bird? Oh, you don't, you don't remember the um, caretaker or grave, whatever he is. He had a, a dead bird that Mornak wanted. Oh, I guess you were a little preoccupied with all the hugging and petting that he was doing. Yes, and it was not yeah. long after that that I was whisked away into the shadowy world that I spent some time in. So I, don't, I kind of blocked out everything having to do with that buffoon. Understandable. Which was quite a magnificent bird. But uh, you will hear these heavy footsteps coming up behind you. If you turn, you can see Erwin as he rushes up. Ah, my friends, are you going to the tower? Yeah. Oh, of course. Now, who is Erwin again? I can't remember. He is the patron of the bar, the oh, okay. raven guy. What are you talking to? Yeah. He says, well, I believe I will accompany you on this. If you want to take a look at this, I can... Uh, distract old Isaac for you for a few moments. Me and him, you know, we're quite friendly with each other. It's more the merrier. Yeah. Oh. You guys will make your way up and around. The church sets up on a hill a little bit higher than the town, so it sort of looks down upon it. As you come around the corner and start heading up this little pathway up to the church, you can see pretty much everybody standing outside of the church. Some of them look quite upset who might have been no, friends with, you know, his name was, uh, what the hell was his name? Mark, Mark, what's that for the day? George. <laughs> <laughs> Milavage. Actually. There we go. <laughs> Milavage. So you can see some of them look upset. Some of them just look rather confused, but everybody's standing out front of this place. Um, two guards stand on either side of the doorway, and you can hear talking from within. But, you know, as you come up to the door, these guards will sort of step over. You'll notice one sort of this placid look on his face does not look too impressed really doesn't even make any eye contact just stands in your way this grayish pale colored skin his hair is a, sort of an off shade of white the other one that stands there looks a little bit more lively and you can see he looks at you rather curiously he has this bright red scarf that's wrapped around his neck he says ah, what's the meaning of you come in here we were told no visitors. You were, we were not. Wrong. Yes. <laughs> because we are visiting. Well, we have no open church tonight. You'll have to go back home. By Isaac's command. But as the most religious people in this town, outside of the, our fair priest himself, it, it would behoove him to allow us to examine this horribly grisly experience that, that is a befall this bell tower church. He'll look at his partner in fact. And... Hmm. His ex had no visitors. There's no more premier experts in this sort of vile vileness than the three of us. I suppose that makes sense, but 
Go ahead and give. If you it actually a... want to give to a, an answer, see what's actually happening, then you should let us come by. Give me a will challenge roll. Oh, okay. Well, that's, that's my worst. <laughs> <laughs> Seven. Uh, is that with any modifiers? I don't have. I have no modifiers. Ten looks. This is. Uh, mm, Isaac would have my ass if I let anybody in there. He says, "No, no. You will have to take that up with the burgomaster or come back with a letter." Well, Sorry. where's Isaac? Can you go get him? He told me to stand my guard here. You know the last guy who didn't stand his guard? He chopped the leg off. I like my leg. Well, that's quite extreme. Yes, we call him Long Peg now. Morgan, I'd like to cast Maddening Screams <laughs> on this guy. Well, think well, less really quickly. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what does Maddening Screams do? Okay, I'm going to flood the target's mind with inhuman screams, make an intellect attack against the target's will. On a success, the target gains 1d6 insanity. Well then, let's see. I'm probably only like a 10. This is... Let's see. Is it, is it too late to like separate myself from him? Like, maybe like <laughs> go away? <laughs> Uh, let's see, just a regular oh, mercenary. So, uh, do, 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 do. intellect. So, yeah, just a ten is the challenge. Reading. Okay, I got an eighteen, plus my modifiers. So he gets one d six insanity. Five. So you will see. Looks around for the moment. Is it just affect one or both? Uh, it just affects one. Right. The other guy doesn't seem too interested in this at all anyway. You see he looks around though, his face just going completely pale and white, his eyes widen out a little bit. And he looks around, he says, I uh, think I gotta, I, gotta, I gotta go. And he'll turn and starts moving away, sort of confused and you know, kind of clutching at his head a little bit, looking around with this like intense paranoia on his face. His partner, look at all of you and look over at this guy and look back and says, hmm. I'm concerned for your fellow there. You should check up on him. And I look back and you stay here. Uh, I promise on whatever I hold dear. <laughs> I, we'll be back in just a few moments. And he'll turn and rush over to his friend there, leaving these doors open for a few moments. I scamper off inside towards the bell tower. And uh, Mornak just kind of follows after Vasily. Like he, he's trying to look like he's being sneaky, but it just isn't working. He's clearly trying to sneak into this place and everybody who sees can, can see it. People also don't really pay too much attention. I guess some of them might look at you or something out of curiosity, but nobody really says anything as the three of you step through. The church is shaped, uh, basically you step into a simple little foyer. To your right, you can see a doorway that goes into an office, and then to the left is where they have a little fountain of holy water and stuff. And then in front of you, the double doors open up a second pair into the main um, hall or where all the pews and everything are. And you can still see the shattered window off to your right that Mud stuck his head through. And some of the other church patrons are still standing around a little bit in here, but directly ahead, about a 50, 60 feet all the way up the front where the podium would be, you can see the stairwell that rises up into the tower on the back side of the church. But hanging down above the, the stage where the podium is and stuff, you can see this lad, Milavage. His shovel that he always carried around is laying at the foot underneath his feet like on the stage itself. He's about 10 feet off the ground and solely sort of swinging back and forth. 
Isaac is there. He's not turned around or you know, paying any attention to you guys. But he stands towering over three other guards that are there looking at it at the moment, too. That he seems to be just looking up at this body, swinging, trying to decide what to do. I'm just going to examine it from the distance that I'm at, see if I can see any pattern to these wounds, if, there's, if they are, in fact, arcane runes at all. Uh, give me an intellect. Uh, do you have something that would give you a boon? Uh, academic magic. All right. Um, I'm going to say you have one bane from the distance, but that'll counteract it. So just a basic intellect. Could, could I help him, like, see and decipher? Or not decipher, because I have no idea what, what, what the hell all that stuff is. But basically, could I do a perception check and relay to him what I see yeah, yeah. to help him? That would work. Okay. I speak some strange languages, so I'd like to also get up there and uh, and hear what Victor has to say. Eight plus three, so that's I got a, I got a fourteen. Right, so you can add a bone to yours, Vasily, or yeah, boon, not a bone. Okay, so that's a four extra, so it's a fifteen total. And if you want to make an intellect as well, Mornak, let's see what you get. You can do it with a boon as well. Who was that towards? Yeah, that's not going to work. I, I got a seven. With all those eyes, you couldn't see anything? <laughs> <laughs> They're all too busy looking in other directions. <laughs> um, it was Victor's time the to describe sort of... got blood running down his eyes. <laughs> you can see better than the two normal... <laughs> Victor describes these um, cuts and stuff covering body. You can see that he's been, or Milavaj has been stripped down. He's just in basic pair of like under breeches. Everything else is all of his clothes are shoved to the side. And as he describes these, it sounds silly like um, if you had to guess something either on more of the necromantic or demonic ruins of some sort, definitely something quite dark and evil, but it is definitely some sort of writing or runic of some sort yes if it's in dark speech i can read in my dark speech okay can you as well more neckered what languages do you have uh i can do dark speech trollish or i can do uh higher okay. since you both have dark speech as he is you know describing these to you and you get to look probably have to take a little bit of step forward and maybe stand behind some of these pews but as he's going over these and telling you what he sees and you guys are kind of piecing this together with what you can tell, it seems to be some sort of contract that was carved into his flesh. It mentions the children of the night and the festival of the burning or the blazing sun. Perhaps there's more to this festival than we were led to believe. It's a good thing I had no intention on being there. And if all of you want to give me one more perception check, you might notice a little bit more. So, I don't have any bonuses. Oh, I do. Plus four. So. Oh, I rolled a natural 20, so 24. Oh, damn. 11. 14 for Victor. Ocelia, you'll definitely notice that then. As he's describing these and you're looking around, you can see his shovel sort of down underneath, a little bit out of sight, but you can see the head of it and the whole thing looks like it's been banged up. It's dented quite bad. You'll also see that several of the tiles on the floor right in front of the podium are cracked and broken. Is this viewable from the front door or as sick as that? Uh, yes. Okay. Let's go back to the front door. I don't want to get the legs cut off. I'm going to go back to the front door. When I get there, I'm going to yell, Oh, Isaac! Oh, dear priest, Isaac! You see, he spins around quickly, looking to see, and then his eyes narrow down as he looks at all of you. He'll turn and says something to these guards who will stand there as he turns and starts to head your way. The guards look like they're getting a ladder or something to try and get this kid down. He's about 10 feet off the ground. And he'll come up as the two guards will sort of make their way over to trying their best to uh, 
look like the guard in the doorway as best as possible. And he'll look at them and they sort of just, you know, back up with their hands up saying that you guys in, in, insisted on calling, talking to him. But he'll turn and, and what the hell do you want? May we perhaps investigate this with you? Of we course are, not. We I think are, I have this perfectly under control. We are some of the most formal, for some of the most knowledgeable people in this area on on such things. I can see from here that though that there's dark speech written all over him. It seems to be some sort of contract. But if I could look closer, I might be able to discern something more. So should I take that as a confession that you're some sort of necromancer? You know, we don't no, not appreciate at all. those kind around here. Not, at not all. many people read dark speech. I only read it so as a righteous purveyor, I might smite down such wickedness when I see it. Give me a will challenge roll. His will was a 14 as your target. Ooh, 16. Ooh, nice. <sighs> He'll look at more neck, all eyes blinking. And everything. You travel with less scrupulous foes and a thing like yourself. Can't help but think you're a demon itself. I don't see many goats people that wander these streets. But yeah, you come with me. The rest of you sit out here and wait. He'll look around and sees Erwin, and you can see Erwin shuffle over and, ah, well, my good friend Isaac, you know this this small goat man. He's quite a quite a knowledgeable fellow. He'll he'll help you good. He'll help you good. But don't you worry. I, I'll keep these other two busy. And he'll sort of put his arms around Mornak and Victor, Erwin does, and sort of tries to lead you guys off to the side, around the side of the building. I'm just going to go up as close as I can and examine him. See if I see anything different. Any names or anything. Details in the contract. Um, Victor's actually going to go to the broken window, and he's not going to hide or anything. He's literally going to like stick his face through the window and just listen in on what's going on. Erwin will be a Stay now the church. Erwin will be beside you. Uh, tell me what you hear, friend. Tell me what you hear. If there's, if there's anything, I might be able to piece together. Monarch, you, you keep good watch with them eyes. Make sure nobody sticks around the corner. Aye, aye. <laughs> uh, once you get in there, you see that oh. Isaac... Well, go ahead, Victor. Well, I was going to say, um, Mornite, maybe you should go look and see if you can find the Goober's clothes so that way you can find your bird. Because he, he was, like, out in the graves last time we saw him. So uh, maybe... His clothes is up on stage with him. Well, below his body hanging. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Well, even still, well, it probably wouldn't hurt to, to look around outside. Yeah, Mornak will go ahead and look around outside and just try and... Uh... See if there's any clues out there or anything. Uh, give me a perception roll, then, Mornak. Thirteen. Okay. We'll swing to you in just a second. Um, inside, as Isaac leads you in, Vasily, you can see that he unstraps this wicked looking ax from his side and sort of puts it in his hands as he walks forward. You notice that one eye, well, his whole left side is sort of kind of deformed with that one huge arm that he has. You can feel the heat that seems to radiate off him, but that eye on the left side of his face also seems to watch you even though the other eye stares forward, sort of oddball-like. This is, all right, you got 30 seconds, goat boy. Tell me what you see here. What does this say? He'll lead you up to the body. You look through it. It seems to be some sort of contract, a lot of just mumbo jumbo and stuff, but you see that it looks to be some sort of contract that is given by his life that will summon the six night children on the festival of the blazing sun upon the bones of St. Andrew himself. Saint. I'll just repeat everything that I'm reading out loud. Um, you know that this church is called St. Andrew's Church. And, uh, the church that we're in is St. Andrew's. Okay. And, uh, uh, is Basili speaking loud enough for Victor to 
here. Yeah, outside. I'm saying I know that you guys were outside, so I'm just repeating it as loudly as I think I can. Okay. Then without shouting. Then as you're repeating it, Victor's gonna repeat. Everyone will listen into this for Victor and you can see this nervous look on his face as he's hearing this and his eyes will wide a little bit when I mention the St. Andrew's bones. And he'll sort of almost just kind of pull you out of the window to try and look at himself, Victor, as he looks. And you see his face kind of goes pale a little bit. He steps up, he says, oh, this is, this is bad, my friends. This is, this is not good. This is not good at all. Oh, we, we need to get back home soon. And inside is a cool and kind of look at this and look at you. Well, then I suppose we should let the Burgo master of these facts. Are you sure that's what it says? Yes, I'm positive. And you will notice, well, give me a perception check. Uh, 27. Right. He sort of looks around a little bit, almost like he's looking for something, but um, he can't quite tell. He says, very well. Get the body down. Let's get out of here. And he'll well, turn. That's, and, that's all I can discern. I'm going to turn around and start walking. You can see he sort of reaches out towards you as if he was going to shove you out of here, but seeing that you're leaving, he just sort of stares at the back of your head as you head out of this place. Um, you will notice my, that... My hooves feet clippity cloth as I run up the as you pass by, it's sort of right in front of the, the podium there where Father Lucien would give his sermons and stuff. Right at the base of it, the whole ground has been shattered. The tiles that were there, it looks like it's been dug up or something. Um, when you were here before, it was not there. It was quite, this place is a little bit in disarray, but that looks quite new. So it looks like the, the tiles were pulled up or they were they shattered? Uh, a little bit of both. Okay, so it looks like something was dug. How I'm going to peer down in, in the hole. How deep is it? Um, it looks like it's all been filled back in now, but given um, how much it's kind of mounted up, you figure probably a good three or four feet. Mm. It's about a five foot by five foot section. You'll notice um, Milavage's shovel is quite dented and scraped up as well. Mm. Our dear, once I go back to our to the rest of the groups, it seems like our dear shoveler dug up the ground there. His shovel was all dented up and there was a hole that was dug in front of the altar. I notice Mornick is looking around, sort of as you come back outside to meet with the others. Erwin is looking rather pallid at the moment. Um, Mornick, with 13, you look around, you can sense some, um, maybe kind of browse around this uh, cemetery in the back, even from not going all the way into the cemetery or anything, but you can see there's still quite a few um, mounds that have been dug up. Um, you don't really see anything out of the ordinary um, that doesn't look different from what it did before anyway. Um, most of the graves that are there, it looks like they're quite old, even though they're still dug up, but you think that was just more Milavaj's uh, fetish that he had and less anything darker, worrisome. But otherwise you don't really see anything else out here. There is a couple guards walking around too, looking at stuff, but they don't seem to really pay much to you attention and don't look to be doing anything important. I go over to the guards and I ask about the bird. Hold on, you speak when looks at you. Was he found with a bird on him? A dead bird? I haven't even seen the body. Did you see the body? What did it look like? I heard it was covered in, in dark speech and, and horrible pictures. What did it look like? Mm, more or less that, yeah. Uh, what did it say? Do you know what it said? Oh, it's a dark, vile curse. It, it summons the uh, the devil. <sighs> that is that is so unfortunate. Well, bless the Burgo Master, he keeps us safe. And uh, the festival of burning sunny, but it'll it'll be perfectly fine. Ah, yes, all will be well. All will be well. It's a popular saying here, you know, my friend. But I don't wish you I had worry. Your confidence. It, says, ah, it comes in due time. Don't you worry. Don't everything will be just fine. Isaac and the Burgo Master will figure this out. Now. Our trust in Father Lucy, he's a good man. The devil can't get us here, no, no. Summoned or not, the devil can't come here. He says, don't you worry, friend. You get home, have a bit of drink, and have a good evening, eh? Sounds great. 
Once you head back over to the others, Erwin will sort of come over and he says, ah, this does not bode well, my friends. This is the... You mentioned St. Andrew and Int. Was he perhaps buried there where that hole was put? He looks around, making sure nobody's really listening in, and sort of motions you guys to, uh, you know, kind of come back around the front and try not to draw attention to yourselves as he walks. And says, we should walk back to the blue water, and I'll, I'll tell you on the way. And he'll start walking. This is the church. A good five, six hundred year old church that is quite many centuries. It's been built several times and re- redone, but the original founder was St. Andrew himself. This is a, a great young man who followed the beliefs of the morning lord, a fine man from the tales that are told. His bones, blessed and holy, made this site protected. They are buried beneath the foundation. They were a, a banishment, a, a protection from the devil. Nothing undead, nothing evil could come here. So just, to be quite honest, that is the only thing that protected this town. Not the Burgo Masters Festival. It was his bones. With them here, the devil could not enter. As if they were dug up, then it is imperative that we find them, for it's only a matter of time before he comes to deal his, perhaps finish his contract. Children of the night, likely some of his vampires spawn. Well, it sounds like they're planning on coming on the night of this festival. Uh, would make sense, yes. I mean, Strad doesn't much care for this Burgomaster's antics. What better time to humiliate him and kill him in the streets than at his own festival? This is not well. Not well at so all. So I guess, I guess the burning, pressing question is, how exactly are we going to find this body? <laughs> Says I... My guess is, you talk to the dead lad. Can you speak with the dead? Oh. I don't know anybody who could. He says, no, I fear that we are. It a threads end on this. We will have to figure something out. Perhaps Father Lucian has information. People head down the street back towards the blue water wren and now and then sort of mumble himself, mumbling to himself or, you know, trying to think of different options or just kind of shaking his head. But the worry is quite evident on his face. Well, if this bumbling buffoon was the one that was used as the tool to dig it up, it seems like his shovel was the one that was used to pry open the flagstones and dig a hole underneath. Perhaps he's his, in his quarters somewhere, some place that he might frequent? Perhaps, perhaps we'd, we'd have to get into the church without music and his, his goons there. They'll likely be swamping the place all evening. By the way, this saint, Saint Andres, Andre? Andrel. Andrel, is, was this a, a boy priest or girl priest? A young lad when he first took patronship here, but he grew to be, uh, stories say, 104. But mm. uh, that's quite old for a human, of course. No, it was just, it was, it was just a, uh, an idea I had, because the, the buffoon said that he was off to see his girlfriend the last time I saw him, so I thought maybe perhaps if it was a female that he was planning on digging up, digging her up, but if it was a boy, <laughs> then that was it. So, uh, no, no, and the bones were... Well, there wouldn't be much there to play with, I guess, anymore. Just heavy bones in a sack. We might have to dig up any recent graves that he's made with since then. Well, I'd happy help him to let me know what you might need, but says I believe I might have a few contacts who could help us if you want. Give me the evening to work on it, and perhaps you can do a bit of looking around yourselves. So I think I might have something to help. Ooh. Says, what might that be? Says, uh, well, it's not yours to keep, but 
I think I got something you can borrow. Mm -hmm. Come, come. You head down the street back towards the blue water and you can see a few people have sort of filtered out and stuff. Some of the people are making their way back up. Inside is Mark and Irene are off to the side. We're working on a little bit of small bowl of soup that uh, Danica has brought out. The Burgomaster you do not see, but you do see Father Lucien standing there just constantly wringing his hands and he has a small set of prayer beads in his hands as he every now and then sort of bows and makes a, a prayer under his breath. His eyes sound almost like he's in a sort of a meditation over in this chair that he's sitting in. Irene will stand up and oh, what, what did you find? Oh, all sorts of nastiness. Do you really want the details? <laughs> no, no, no I, I do not actually. I just I feel bad for the young man. He was strange, but he was kind-hearted. You know, he brought me a ring on my first night there, a simple little ring that was quite beautiful. It's on my nightstand now. But, uh, and he welcomed me to the church and told me about how it was protected from the devil and that I'll be safe here. So, uh, I won't lie, I'm a little bit nervous, but I believe in Father Lucian and these people. The festivals it's stood here for centuries and the devil hasn't come, so... What could go wrong, right? Of course, of course. I, I pat them on the back. So, so you believe everything will be fine, Vasily? Should, should we head back up to the church? Who was this? This was... Irina. She was the... Uh, she was... The girl from the very beginning. Basically, the one you escorted here with Ismark. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, yes. It's... Just, just set yourself down. Everything will be fine. It will be taken care of. Very well. Hmm. Take a seat. You can see she kind of rubs the side of her neck a little bit and goes back to eating at her soup. Um, Victor, get out of this town. This is awful. This is the worst thing that could possibly happen. We need to get out of here. Uh, Victor, you'll notice that this <laughs> scarf that she has around her neck is a little bit bloodied on the side. Looks fairly fresh. Um, where is uh, mud actually at this point? Like, I know the player's not here, <laughs> but is he just well, wandering since, around somewhere? Since or Jesse's is he, sleeping, like, I imagine Mud's him? probably upstairs sleeping. <laughs> He okay. had quite a rough day with Isaac, so he he's over in the corner and he's covered with um. frost, <laughs> meditating. <laughs> but I mean, he can well use them. Okay, if the, if that's the case, I could I could see people like putting their their mugs next to him to frost <laughs> their mugs and then you know, <laughs> and get nail like. But anyways. Um, I'm going to go up to, to Father, well, I'm going to point that out to the other two, the, the two that are here, about her bleeding on, on the neck. And then I'm going to go up to Father Lucian and kind of sit down next to him and wait for a second, make sure that no one is like eavesdropping. But I'm going to ask him, so who knew about the body buried underneath the church? So, or... Let me rephrase. How many people knew about the body being buried underneath the church? You know, we'll lift his head up slowly and looks at you, Victor. You can see just the wear and tear that's been, you know, taking its toll on him with all of this. And says, most of the people here in town know the stories. Some believe it, some don't. But it is true. It is true. The the saint's bones were buried there where it has been dug up. I, I fear to see if they're still there. It says it's common knowledge or common rumor, if you will, but a fact nonetheless. But how many people knew that it was a fact? Who's to say? It says everybody in town would mm. come to the church to pray for their sins and to 
uh, offer their prayers to the morning Lord, who's been gone now for far too long. Says I would hope through my sermons and through my teachings that everybody believed that the bones were there and well, I portrayed it as fact because it is indeed a fact. Says there are some, the less scrupulous, the, the lack of riches and the Wachter Haas and some of the others that perhaps didn't believe in the bones, but uh, even the Burgomaster knew that they were there. I think it's a good idea that we find mm -hmm. these bones. I think we need to examine the quarters of this shoveler and perhaps uncover any of his recent graves. Maybe this lunatic Shoveler decided to do something with them. And he'll look at you as he says, Milavan, he was odd for lack of terms, but he was a good lad. He wouldn't do this of his own accord. There, there would be no reason. Well, I'm not saying he did it of his own accord. So but he was also quite simple minded and easily easy to use. Ah, yes, I see what you say. Yes, I agree. He is a young man that could be easily taken advantage of. I tried to teach him well and he, he knew where it's from wrong, but indeed he would have the means, the capacity and the knowledge to get to them bones himself. But if that's the case, then might answer why he's now dead. We don't want too many speaking up, you know. But I don't know who would want them. They are the protection of this town. Whoever would take them and, and do something with them, would, would they're bringing death upon us all. What kind of horrible person would do such a thing? Even the Burgomaster, as foolish as he is, doesn't incur the wrath of the devil. Well, I mean, you did hear Have you noticed the translation of them, right? There's no doubt some cult of the devil that is involved in this. Hmm. Yeah, that is quite true, my friend. Quite true indeed. Is, uh... Have you noticed anyone strange that's been going around the church lately? There were a few folk. One of them smashed our window. He sort of looks at all of you for a moment. Says, I only just to bring a bit of humor into this dark situation. But no, besides you gentlemen, not many people have passed through of late. There are quite a many Vistani here, though, which is a little strange, likely from the uh, the tent town to the east, but... Well, they're all they, known servants of the devil. Says, yes, and well, if you were to ask me, I'd say that they're here to cause a bit of a ruckus nonetheless, but... Do the they not killers, come to the festival? Says, no, not very often. They, uh... Usually when they come, they do so to drink the wine and to party in the, in the festival atmosphere. But as of late, they have stayed away. It is rather odd that they've all shown up now, but says, who knows, those standing are strange. They're not killers, but they certainly do the devil's work when you need to. Perhaps. One of them is a bit more sinister than the rest. I've heard tales of some rather brutal Vistani. So, good priest, how about it? Can we examine his quarters and unearth any of his recent mounds? Well, certainly I could take you there. Isaac is supposed to be taken the party. The burgomaster has demanded to be taken to his guest house for inspection, and then it will be taken down to the uh, coffin maker's place, and proper burial, all that good stuff. But 
if yeah, you wish I've already, to. I've already gathered all the information from there that I that I can. Ah, excellent. Well, what is it you found exactly? Oh, he wasn't there when I was repeating. Oh, he's been at the inn. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I'm just going to repeat everything about the contract about the. <sighs> You know, I don't follow the dark arts as much as perhaps I should. Because I've had a bit of training and understandings. Those that priests like myself would would naturally learn. But from what they understand of these contracts and these flesh bindings, that is, well, a person has to make such a contract of their own free will. Milovage was indeed quite a simple man, but whoever he made this deal with, perhaps that is where all of this roots from. If we can find that, then I think we could find the bones as well. Yes, we can take a look in his room, see what we can find. He has simple quarters, but I can't promise you won't find a few dead birds in there. Well, I knew any clues that he might that there might be as to perhaps where he has tucked it away if does he write does he know how to read and write perhaps uh, not much uh, i've taught him simple things some of the passages of the morning lord's teachings um, he's quite slow to learn and to, and to write he, uh, small bits perhaps yes but not much mm. then he probably doesn't have any sort of journals or written evidence of who he might have spoke to uh, I sincerely doubt it, uh, but it won't hurt to look, perhaps. Yes. I tell you what, meet me at the church in 30 minutes. I'll make sure Isaac's gone. You don't want that buffoon wandering about the place. And I'll take you to his quarters. Uh, before, you, before you go, maybe you should look at Irina. And he's just, Victor's going to point at his neck on the side where she was bitten, basically. Um, or basically where she's bleeding to let Father know. Because he's seen the wound, right? Like, he knows basically yeah. her condition. Yeah. He'll look over and... Yes, I noticed it earlier as well. Says, she doesn't remember being bitten. Her brother and sister was the devil himself that did it. It's, it's who knows. It's, uh, there's no uh, uh, personal way to figure it out or what exactly it is, but it's been bleeding the past few days. I, I don't understand. I don't know why, my friend. It's an anomaly, I suppose. The wound, we've bound it a couple of times and have put several selves, but it doesn't close. Perhaps she's still being fed upon Wounds being reopened every every night as tooth as vampire teeth sink into her neck. I thought of that myself, but with Saint Andrew's bones in the church, no vampire could come here, at least not until now. But uh, please don't alert the people to this. I'm trying to keep them calm, but without his bones, then yes, but that was not there until this morning. Perhaps she has been mesmered and at night she leaves the city to be fed upon. Perhaps I would have likely heard her leaving or, or been alerted to it. Ismark has kept quite a close watch on her, seems to be concerned, but perhaps I, I don't quite know. What I do know is that the wound doesn't seem to heal and, well, it just keeps reopening and every evening it tends to bleed a bit. It doesn't seem to give her discomfort, just unfortunate. I will meet you at the church in a few moments. He gathers up his robe sort of around his waist and ties that rope around his belt a little bit to hold him up and gives you sort of a small prayer nod and starts to head out the door. Erwin will come over and says, hey. I heard a bit about what you were talking with the father. He's a good man. You can trust his words. One of the few people here in town I would trust my life to. 
he was only trying to do the best that he can, much like myself in shitty circumstances. Here, yeah. and he brings out a small pouch, and opens it up, and takes out a ring that he sets on the table. He says, I only have one. I've held it upstairs for quite a long time. He says, Perhaps it can do a bit of use for you. And he looks, you put that on your finger, and poof. You go invisible, don't make a sound. You're as light Ooh. as the air. I need it back as it is quite a family heirloom, but if it will help you on this diva, then I trust the lot of you will give it back. Well, we st- well, we'll take it for the time being, but we seem to be getting free realm of the church for the moment, with the priest. So, uh, he tends to give Isaac a bit of leeway. I will say that even if that ogre of a man is not up there at the church. He will be keeping one eye on all of you at times. He seems to have a way of knowing when and where people will be. So keeping that watch over your shoulders, uh, I will try to get things in order down here and find out what I can. And perhaps we can meet in the morning. Are you staying here for the evening? Or would you like to stay at the Burgo Masters? <sighs> Since we have but one room, you will have to share a bed, but the Vistani are quite a raucous couple upstairs. Uh, better than staying at the Burgomaster's abode. Uh, you still have your keys, familiar. You're welcome to your room. I kept it open just in case. So tell me, what do you know of Isaac's wounds? Uh, he's actually... Uh, Fairly young man, perhaps in his late twenties, even though he don't look it. I was here opening the blue water and when he was just a wee lad, he and his sister, I can't remember her name. She passed away long ago, but the two of them and their father, their mother died giving birth. They are twins. But the father raised them quite well. Isaac was quite a skilled hunter. He would often head out to the woods catching the wolves. For a long time, he offered uh, his services here to the Blue Water Inn. He would bring back the wolves and you know, we'd make the stakes. He was quite skilled, quite skilled indeed. He left um, perhaps when he was 16, 17, perhaps. The two of them, he and his sister, off into the woods they went, off on another hunting excursion. And when he came back, he was burned like as if he was thrown into a fire. The scars just covered his body. And he said something of his sister being gone, of, of his sister kidnapped by, by a hag or some such thing. The next day, when he awoke, it must have been like a, a hag's curse of some sort. I must say I don't know too much about these hags. And well, my guess was probably mother, or one or the other, Coven's sisters, but well, he was a young lad again of maybe six, seven. It was if he if he just got younger overnight, but his whole body was corrupted and burnt and, and well grotesque like it is now. That so he always had a penchant for uh, a bit of a dark side, if you will. He liked to kick puppies on the streets and you know make the children cry. Quite a uh, Neanderthal of a man, though don't let his looks for you. He's quite intelligent indeed. In any case, nobody knows what exactly happened to his sister or what curse befell him. His father died in sorrow. Perhaps even Isaac killed him. I do not know. But the burgomaster took him in as his own, raised him. Well, that is what you have of him now. Can't help but think that such a horrible creature is. But what was that? I was asking, when did he get that arm that he that he has? <sighs> well, it is. He came back for after being burned that next day when he was uh, de-aged or uh, made younger again. He, that's how he appeared that morning. With that, that's. Infernal mutation. He says, uh, that was 
about 15 years ago now, give or take. You know, if he wouldn't have lost those years, he probably would have been closer to my age, but you know, it's as if he was thrown back in time and, and came up this way. It makes me wonder if it really is even, is even the, the, the Isaac that we knew. He acts nothing like he did it before. Perhaps I've heard stories of changelings and doppelgangers, darklings that take the body of others. He says, I don't quite know. I've haven't really looked into it much beyond just staying away from the men. Sam, I wish I could remember her sister's name. She was quite a beautiful young lady, dark haired and olive skinned. Very nice young lady indeed, much like her mother. Perhaps he's entered into some sort of unholy compact. And this was the price that he paid for whatever it was that he got. That would certainly make sense indeed. Oh, he seemed like a good lad, but money. Except for kicking dogs. Power can always corrupt a person. I'm sure his sister's off with the hags. One of the hags herself now perhaps turned into a pie. Truly a shame. And Mornak, your time with mother, you would have known that she occasionally did bring in, uh, you know, other people, other kids or children that she kidnapped, most right. usually using them as slaves or whatever, corrupting them. Um, some of them she turned into what she would call their daughters or her children, which were basically like hags themselves, um, just weaker than herself. Or other ones she would cook up and eat for a nice feast. But it was fairly common while you were there. Okay. But I will see what I can find about this whole situation. Perhaps get a few clues. To, a lot of word is spread amongst these people here. Many of it's just rumors, but I will listen in and see what I can learn. And if you need the ring, you can use it, but I will need it back, of course. And if you need anything else, my friends, just just give me a ring. I will happily help, I believe. May, may come in handy. We may have to examine this Isaac's quarters, see if he is in some way involved. That would be a tough one, but... His manor or his room, he lives with the burgomaster upstairs. I don't know he how you would... have a room, a key, and a room in the burgomaster's house that we can access. And with a ring of it, with gives us invisibility, we might be able to sneak our way into his quarters. That's better. You do what you do. Perhaps you might be able to find something indeed there. So I wouldn't doubt it. But well, I'm not going to be the one sneaking into that place. He sort of passed this huge belly that he has. It's, I don't quite get around so silently that I used to. And well, the ring isn't one I like to wear. But it'll be oh, fine. Why is that? Just dark times. Dark times brings back dark memories. And oh. but you don't by fine. any chance see nine nine ghostly fingers. Big ears when you put the ring on, do you? A no, giant no, no. tower with burning eyes. With a burning eye. Ah, yes, yes. Good old folky and tombs. I remember them well when I was a child. Good stories, good stories. But no, no, it doesn't work quite that way. You'll be fine. It, it, it gives you a little bit of a creepy tingling up your spine. But Ooh, I look forward to it. Beyond that, it's just... I used that ring when I was younger to do some things I shouldn't have done. And, uh, I promised myself I wouldn't make such mistakes again. And he'll get up and says, well, as I said, if you need a room upstairs, feel free. If you need anything, let me know. I will look into things a little bit myself and I will also talk to Stefania. I'm sure she can dig up a few nuggets of information as well. If you need anything, let me know. And, with that, he turns and starts to head back behind the bar, drawing himself a glass of mug of uh, drink. Well, let's head off towards the church. What say you? 
looking at Mornak and Victor. Actually, I'm going to yes. say Mud goes with you as well because he does have a few abilities that you might want. So. Well, um, speaking of, if we're going to like sneak into the dickhead's room, I think Dre would probably be the best option for that. Just yeah. because, I mean, look at him. He's like a toothpick. Like, <laughs> he should be able to do it. Um, but as far as the church, uh, what time of day is it? It would be late night. You're looking at like 11-ish at night. Maybe okay. it'd be best if we got a good night's sleep and then you, started in the morning. Well, the priest said we... Well, do you think uh, it's it done? Yeah, the oh, yeah, we said, had to meet the priest. That's right. Yeah, meet you there now. Oh. Yeah, okay. We can at least meet him there, get get access, look around, and if we can be, we can come back and start digging in the morning, but I don't know. Okay. Sounds like a plan. Okay. So as you guys you will head back on up to the uh, Church of St. Andrew, you see it's quieted down a little bit um, as you reach up there. There's a few guards still poking about, kind of looking for clues or something, but don't really pay much attention. Isaac is not anywhere in sight. As you glance around, um, a couple of people, if you ask him, will mention that he's already taken the body back to the Burgomaster's um, house for inspection. As you step inside, you still see the is rope. The, uh, one is the one guard with all the insanity still there, or did he leave? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm sure he left to go back home and try to sleep it off, but no, he is not there. Just a few mooks, nobody okay. important that you really see around. Um, inside, the rope that Milavaj was hanging from still dangles there, and you can see the blood pool underneath. It's been mopped up a little bit, but it's certainly stained. These uh, wooden boards that are make up the stage and the podium where he was hanging from and then the whole ground is still dug up. His shovel, his clothes are all there as well. They haven't really touched anything besides taking him down and left. They haven't done anything else here. Um, Father Lucian will be sitting up front in one of the pews. You can see he's sort of hunched forward with his prayer beads in hand, making a silent prayer. And as you all walk in, make your way down this aisle, as you get about halfway, he'll stand up and give a soft bow and turn to meet all of you. Isaac is gone. Him and his gods took the body. Since I was able to get a glance at it, and well, I believe you're right, Vasily. I don't know much dark speech, but I could pick out a few of the words like you, like you mentioned. Not that I didn't believe you, but it certainly opened my eyes. Says. It's a common folk tale here amongst the populace of Velikai that those on the outside, when they make packs with the devil, he carves such things into the, their flesh, called flesh binding. It is like a contract, but he uses the skin for the paper. This is Milovaj never left this town. He was much too afraid. He had a heavy phobia of the outside, of wolves and, and what lurked out there. Somebody must have tricked the lad or done something. I can say for certain that he, that he would have not went outside the city to do such a, such a thing. And the devil himself would not have been able to come here with those bones buried beneath the church. Well, as I've mentioned, he was supposedly going to meet his new girlfriend several days ago. Perhaps this is what happened. He was tricked to leave the city, and that's when it happened. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. It would be a hard challenge to get the lad to leave, but that doesn't mean somebody couldn't drag him out or knock him out or something. But come, i show you his room. What was the name of the... the so it said something about something about the night, order of the night or something. Children of the night. Children of the night. Yep. The, the uh, children of the night will arrive on the festival of the burning sun. 
Oh, dear. Before we start walking in, into the wherever he's going to lead us, actually, um, I'm going to try to remember back on the body, like, were the marks on his body, like, clean? Basically, because uh, the father did say that he, did, he, he was learning how to read and write. So, you know, of course, when you are writing and you're first learning, your, your letters are, you know, atrocious. So I'm wondering, were they atrocious on the guy's body? Like, did he do it to himself well, it was, or did someone else do it? To it him? would have been, like, very nicely handwritten, quite skilled. Um, okay. Even the custom um, cells would have. Secondly, I'm going to go. Okay. No, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go to the clothes and uh, basically search through his pockets and and all that to see what I find. And if I find the bird, toss it to Mornay. <laughs> um. The. Carvings to it have looked like they were done with quite a um, intricate or sharp sort of knife, nothing jagged or anything like that, but like a, like a scalpel, basically a very fine blade that would have cut these in. Um, in his pockets, he has three copper coins, a pack of uh, like um, candies, like uh, Miss Butterworth candies or something of the sort, hard candies, a dead bird, and a small um, platinum ring that looks more like a child type size. Quite small or a very dainty girl or something like that. Mm. Quite small ring. And that is it in his pockets besides dirt and rocks. Okay. I'm going to leave everything but the ring and the, of course, the bird I'm giving to Mornak. Um, because, oh shit, what's her name? She mentioned that she she got a ring from no, so Irina, yes. I'm wondering if they're the same ring or yeah. So um, if you were to look up, I'm probably show... her fingers. Okay, I'm going to show Fasili, uh and mention. Is this possible the ring that she mentioned? Because she did say it was on her nightstand. He could have taken it back. Possibly. I, I don't know. Did I see it? Was I there when that happened? Um, you would have been there when she mentioned that okay. he gave her the ring, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, the ring would be like her size, quite dainty and small. I'm going to cast Sense Magic just to see if there's any magical auras about it. Um, nope, it is not magical at all. The bird is. The bird's magical? Yeah. Really? Mornak, Mornak, your bird is magical. Vasili, can you raise it from the dead? Not in a way that you would like to see. <laughs> okay, well, Mornak's going to take the magical bird and, and put it into his uh, backpack. Um, it would be charm. Maybe there's type magic. that's the reason why you wanted. Maybe that's the reason why you wanted that bird so badly. It has a charm about it. Yep. Imagine it's not like a, it's, me. It doesn't come across as anything strong at all. It's quite weak, but it's some sort of charmy type magic about it. Yes. Uh oh, someone's got a thunderstorm alert. Some sort of alert. It was pouring here earlier. Um, well, let's go up to his room. Yeah. Father Lucy, he'll lead you. It would be off to the left of you guys, sort of the western side. Through this doorway and down a hall and up a stairwell. And then sort of get to the upper level of this church. And it's just one long hallway with a small, bunch of small rooms on either side of it that act as bed chambers for the monks that live here, as well as uh, Father Lucy and uh, basic church hands. And he'll go down through every room that you pass. None of these rooms have doors on them. They're just open archways that lead into the room. And they all have just a, every one single one is laid out exactly the same with a bed, a nightstand, and a small desk. Um, and then right in the center of each room will be a large prayer mat. But he'll lead down to this end of the hallway and sort of stand there and motion for you. 
take a look. In Milovaj's room, it is quite in disarray. You can see the bed is not made like all of the other ones. It's kind of crooked a little bit in there. Some of the mattress is hanging partly off. The nightstand is crooked in the corner. Uh, the desk doesn't look like it's ever been used. It seems to just hold piles of rocks and uh, pieces of dirt, bones of small animals, several dead birds, a couple mice. Um, there is a small um, wooden flute or recorder type instrument as well that's sitting there. And 14 copper pieces. We're I'm just going to go look at that, uh, that pipe or whatever. It looks like a basic children's recorder, not a very fancy one at all, rather crudely made. Um, but it works perfectly fine if you tried it or anything, just a basic children's recorder. I'm going to be checking all the floorboards just to see if any of them are loose. Like any uh, can come up. Give me a perception check. Fourteen plus four is eighteen. And Victor, what do you do? Um, I'm actually a little bit more. Uh, curious to go into Irina's room to see about that ring, but I'm going to wait until afterwards. Um, I guess just look everywhere that they're not. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> where they're not looking, that's where I'll look. Like, but like uh, the ceiling, I'll look mm -hmm. at, like up in the ceiling in the rafters, or if there's anything up there, that sort of thing. Yeah. Sort of glance around, you take a look through this rubble on the table, and again, there's a few small dead animals and stuff. It looks like he was trying to um, uh, sort of like you would with fossils, try to put the dead animals back together in the proper order of the bones, but they're all rather grotesque looking and things are not really in the right places. And some of the birds are mixed with the mice and it's just a rather horrific little scenery that he has going on on his desk along with rocks. You notice all the rocks that had come out are sort of this reddish clay sort of color. Um, like they would come from like a desert or something. If they don't look like rocks, you would really see outside very much. There's a small pile of them on the table too. And Father Lucy, you will see that you're looking at these and that he had a thing for rocks. He liked to keep the funny looking ones. He thought they were worth something and would often trade them to the other church folk for candies and such. It's, uh, it's quite a quite a humorous lad he was. He tried to play that flute, Mornak, but he, he was not very good. Kept us up at all hours of the evening with that thing. But uh, we let him indulge in his fantasies anyway. Um, as you look around, Vasily, you will finally, as you maybe look under the floorboard and kind of scooch the bed out of the way a little bit or push the mattress back on. There is one floorboard that is loose. It looks like it was pried up by something rather heavy, perhaps a shovel. Um, the nails that would have held it down crooked. It comes up pretty easily. And the inside of there is just a simple picture. Um, looks like it was drawn. It's in a little bit of a frame drawn with charcoal of a woman. Um, She's rather large, um, not really fat or anything, but like muscular, very manly sort of build to her. And she holds a shovel beside her. And next to her is a small little skinny man who has this uh, sort of nobility looking vestment on. As they both just stare from the picture, you can see a house behind them. I'm going to show it to the priest. Does this mean anything to you, this person? It looks... Uh, well, it's not really people, but Milovaj used to believe those were his parents. They weren't. No, that, that picture is nothing but uh, well, one of the artists here in town. His name is Blinsky. He's a toy maker and a bit of an artist, but he drew that picture there and well, it was kind of circulated around town a bit. He called it the Velikai Gothic. But uh, Milovar started to his family and it gave him comfort, so we let him have it. Why would he bury it in the underneath the floorboard like that? Sure, sir. Perhaps so nobody would take it. He was quite uh, protective of some things. And he would often worry himself sometimes to, to 
sickness. The people would touch his things or move his things. A sense of OCD, if you will. He would always know if, if one of his rocks were moved or his, his pets. And this, he probably just kept it and thinking that that was a link to his past, perhaps just tried to hide it so nobody would touch it. Well, I'll just tuck it in one of my pockets. I'll look at that odd soil and say, where would such soil be found? It says, yeah, here and there about the graveyard, hardly enough. Uh, these red rocks and clay soil. Every now and then, digging up the graves and uh, burying the bodies, we would come across the patches of it. I'm not quite sure what to, what sort of thing it has to do with, to be honest, but it's all over in the graveyard. Yeah. Well, we might need to dig in the graveyard, but I'd rather not do that in the middle of the night. Says, no, no, I would not be such comfortable with such things either, my friends, no. Says, I, sorry there's not more here. I, I'm not really sure. I wish I could, I wish I knew more. I wish I knew more. And you'll sort of look around at the rafters as well and the things you guys have. No. Unless you have any further need to be here, perhaps we should, you know, let the room rest and I'll clean it in due time. Well, shall we get a good night's sleep? And try to figure out some way of finding these bones tomorrow? Don't you have a spell or something that you can cast to help, like, find that? I can ask yes or no questions. Well, simple one is, is the bone still in town? Let's not that do it here, would help though. greatly. Let's not do it here. Oh, I just, just suggestion. Yes, yeah. We, we can once we get back to the end. Um, Uh, I'm going to ask the priest which room is Irina's. Huh. He mentioned on the hall and sort of pointed to the doors, like three doors down on your left. And, uh, the young lady and her brother stay there in the room to the left. Says, I must ask I, I, the, the priest here at the church that you don't ruffle through you know, living citizens things, but you're welcome to take a look around if you think it might help. Just something I want to check on. I'm not going to go through her things. Um, basically, I'm going to go and do what I said before and, and look for that ring that she was talking about. Um, not going to go like all the way in the room unless I spot the ring, you know, like on the nightstand. Like I'm just going to kind of give a quick peek kind of deal. Um, and then I can always ask her about it later. But basically, trying to see if I can find that ring. Um, yeah, you kind of step in. You can see her room's pretty much like all the others. She has a few of her own belongings and stuff in there in her chest that she brought with her and stuff like that. That's sort of stacked up. So the room's a little bit cluttered, but there's no ring on the nightstand. Um, you can see, hey, if you're going in there and looking, yeah, where the nightstand is a little bit, you know, dusty from, you know, the day or whatever, but there is an area marked where the ring would have been. You can still see like the outline and the dust on the on the nightstand, but there's no ring there which would match the same size ring that you have, yes. Okay. All righty. I will, in, if no one else followed me in there, I will um, go back to the group and inform them that her ring's missing and this fits the spot where it was, but not 100% sure. If it, it is the same ring yet, I'll ask uh, Irina if I see her when we go back. Um, do you show it to Father Lucian, or will he be there when you show it, or, like? Uh, he'll be there when I mention it. I don't think I'll, I'll show the others, um, or, like, yeah. or at least pull it out of my pocket. I will mention a, a ring in yeah, his presence, so. He would look at you, and 
You say that Milovaj gave the young lady a ring. Do you have it? It's missing, yes? I'll show. I, well, I found it in his pockets on his clothes, and I'll show him. He looks in the ring. He says, ah, yes. Oh, the Milovaj. You know, he tend to uh, like the ladies a bit. He proposed to all of them. Every girl in town he would propose to. That's his ring he would often offer in proposal. Uh, many of them would, you know, accept and jest and have a bit of fun with him. He would always come back to retrieve it. He would get the night sweats and get what you call the, the nervousness of getting married. And he would back out always. But he likely proposed to the young lady and then chickened out. Yeah, is this the same as the invisible ring, or is this a different ring? No, nope, bad, different ring. Okay. It says I don't know where the lad even got the ring. Probably off of one of the bodies he buried. It says I scolded him many times for that. Many times, constantly taking little trinkets and stuff off the dead. But well, it was rude nonetheless against the dead. But it was harmless too. He would always put it back, put it back. Is, is there anything else I can help you with this evening? That's all I can think of. Perhaps we'll be back in the morning to see if he's had any recent unearthings. Perhaps. Yes, I plan to get the people in and get a nice rest and Hopefully tomorrow we can find something else. I will make my prayers tonight that we can find the bones before before something bad happens. I hope. And he with that he'll sort of start ushering you all back down the hall and down the stairway out the building. Well so, seeing that it's in the middle of the night, I'm going to start making my way quickly back towards the inn. Never know what horrible things will swoop down in the middle of the night. Indeed, indeed. If you glance you up, some ideas. Glance up into these dark skies above you. No sky or no stars, no moon. Just that same dark purple sort of cloudiness that hangs above you. A few drops of rain will pelt the street. Is it's yet another night of fog and rain and drizzly coolness. It seems it's home for mud at least, but it's not all that comfortable for the rest of you. Um, she was dirty no matter what way you looked at it. Erwin will be sitting at the bar when you guys enter. Most of the place is cleared out. Ismark and Irina are not there anymore as well. Um, just a couple of patrons left there who were cleaning up their things and you'll look over. So, what did you find, my friends? Did you find the bones? Put we them found, back. We found bones. Mismatched bird and mice bones. <laughs> Sounds just like me, Lavage, indeed, yep. Yeah. I was able to get one thing. Oh? It says, I watched them bring the body back down to the streets. They met the coffin maker over yonder and he sort of nods his head out the window towards the Burgomaster's mansion. They all took the body to the out back house there and to the guest house. Looks like you probably want to be staying there unless you want to bunk with the dead. But eh, if you're looking to get to the body, that's where it is. And if you look across the street, you can see the lights on her, you know, uh, sconces and stuff glowing in the windows of this little guest house to the side of the mansion. Uh, shadows inside moving about. Well, we still do have the keys to it. So if we need to go visit it later, we can at least. Since I'd be curious to see what they're doing with it. The dead are never brought to the Burgomaster's place. Hell, if anybody dies, he just lets the priest go pick them up and Milavage would drop them in the ditch. He has no interest in the dead. Well, maybe we should investigate that then now, see what they're doing, what untoward things they're doing with this deceased. Uh, 
like I said, that is not my place, but if you want to check it out, it might be worth looking into. What say you fine fellows? Victor's going to kind of sink his head down and just going to be like, Ugh, I'm never going to get any sleep tonight. <laughs> All right, sure, let's go. Well, we can give it to our, our good friend here who is more fleet of foot than perhaps the rest of us, and he might be able to sneak about with the ring of invisibility. Yeah, if you guys want Dre to go over and take a gather or some information, you can return it. Wait, which... which... Yeah, Dre. Okay. I would basically just give him a roll to see how much information he's able to bring back for you, if you want to start over. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's if he nat- fails, can we make him go do it again? <laughs> I'm just saying no, because that's a nat 20 anyway. So he's, you guys settle in. He can have Erwin brings you out a bit of food and a drink before you get ready to head for bed. You can see Dre as he heads out across the streets. A good half hour or so will pass before he comes back and slips through. This is... I don't know what they were doing with the bodies. He says there's two of them there. One, a young lady, perhaps in her mid twenties. They have her on the table along beside this uh, young man, Milavage. Says both of them are just covered in these these cuts and these scars. Oh. Uh, both of them damaged around the neck as if they were hung. Says uh, Isaac is there, the burgomaster, and another young fellow, and he sort of looks at you, Victor, he says, resembles you. Oh, it must be the Burgomaster's son? So perhaps, yes. And then, uh, what was her name? Lydia, the, the mother, the, the, the wife of the Burgomaster. All of them are in there, but the son, he was, he was putting something on their bodies, these, like a salve, it was a red paste, caused these, these cuts to glow, and some of them would heal, some would open. It was like they were, they were, casting some sort of ritual or, or something. Oh, this isn't good. So another man was there as well, a tall fellow, scruffy skin and beard, white, uh, quite calloused hands, looks like perhaps a, a woodworker, a carpenter or something. Off Probably to the side, watching. A coffin maker. He was watching all of this, a bit of a... If I was to judge appearances, I would say a bit of a worried look on his face, but it's hard to say. I couldn't hear much through those windows. The place is well protected. Based on what he's describing, do I? can I think of anything that they might be doing? Uh, give me a intellect. You can add your arcana to that for a boon. 17 plus 5 is 22. Yeah. Um, a few different things would come to mind. Um, you know that sometimes they would do rituals like this to speak with the dead. Um, you know, ones they would be able to do if they were doing some sort of like uh, exorcism or some sort of um, cleansing of the soul type of thing would match that. As well as if they were trying to um, like speak, or not really speak, but uh, try to like look back into the person's um, mind or or you know like past i guess or recall what they recently went through i'm going to turn to our friend here the that gave us the rings has there been another body found with these writings so i haven't heard of a damn thing to myself no i I haven't heard nothing but yet they have some they have someone else there at the burgomaster's house says, I've seen anybody about town missing, but I also don't really keep a close watch on everybody. I mean, people are just people here sometimes. And you know, look at her. Was she of paler skin or was she uh, uh, kind of more to herself a uh, uh, fleshier? And Drea mentioned that she's not pale at all, that she seemed more lively, I guess. Or you know. says, uh, She's got the soul then. I don't know what we should do about that. That just, That's very untoward of them to be doing such things. 
Officially <laughs> sneaking about at the middle of the night as well. Like the burgomaster is but a fool. As if I wouldn't put it past the Zika. Even his wife wouldn't. Maybe his son, perhaps, but says, the burgomaster's a buffoon. He's lucky enough that he can read a children's book, let alone perform rituals. Says that's no, one of the others there, the son or the mother, perhaps maybe Isaac, who knows. He's probably there just to look important. So are we are we gonna go over there? Well, what do you guys think? I think we should wake up Bud and go over there. I agree. <clears throat> go wake up Bud from his hibernation. <laughs> his icy his icy sleep. The room just smells like icy hot and menthol <laughs> in there. <laughs> I am going to go up to, to to the room and then without all the prying eyes around, I'm going to burn one of my castings of um, Grave Grasp and, and cast from my Grimoire Augur. And I'm going to pull out my, my deck of cards and casting, as I'm casting, they start spinning about. I'm going to cast, ask the question, are the bones of St. Arthos at the Burgomaster's house? Um, you will get a card let me see. I believe there's... Do, 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 do. Better luck next time. Yeah. <laughs> Is there one that works? Uh, ooh, that's a good one. So the card traitor will be the one that comes up. And you just kind of get this uh, sense in the back of your mind or whatever. But the answer is no. Um, but the picture of, yes, the card you brought up is traitor. Traitor as in like a trader, not a merchant trader, but a trader yeah, as tra 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 deceives you. With, yeah. with a T. Yeah. Yes. I will cast it once more, burn one more casting of gray's grasp and ask if the bones are still in town. Uh, you'll get a yes answer on that. And what's a good card for that that fits? Uh, I am going to say the house and the location or okay. the GPS location, you know, that would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a good one. Um, I am going to say I'm going to get the card for executioner. Mm. Yeah, that's the best card that fits. So yeah, you'll get the executioner card and the answer of yes. Well, it's not the Burgomaster's house. And you're house, doing this reading town. privately, right? Well, I just went, but anyone who wanted to come up to the room could have come up with me, I, but I just wasn't going to do it right there in the middle of the inn. I think I would be busy trying to wake up Mud like wherever he was, like I would grab a chair and kind of like poke him with it and step back just so he wouldn't hit me or anything like that. So I think that's what I would be doing. Maybe maybe he was up in the room. <laughs> yeah, he would have been, probably been up in the room. I don't think he would have been eucalyptus scene down in the main common room. Probably would have been up at his place. I think Mornak would have, uh, would have gotten a bottle of some wine and gone up to, uh, to see the sea league do his questions. But he'd be drunk while, while it's going on. Give me a um, will challenge. Roll Mornak with a boon. Nineteen. Nice. Most of the bottle's gone. Um, Victor and Vasily, you'll notice it more, but you look over and you see one of these eyes that is just, maybe it's one that's kind of on his or neck shoulder or something peeking out between his robes closes like blinking or whatever and it seems to fade off of his skin and is gone so you can remove one eye more neck Ooh. Mm. 
I think Victor would grab that bottle of wine, whatever he has left, and just start pouring it on his face <laughs> after seeing that. It's a wash the blood wine. away. Victor, <laughs> that's good wine. There's not much of that left. It would wash your face quite well, and you'll smell fruity and grapey, but yeah, five minutes would pass, and you'd be bleeding out of your nose and eyes again. Okay, but it, it seemed like it did, like, prevent it from bleeding, like, right away. Because most oh, yeah. of the time it would be, like, I wipe it away and it start bleeding again. Yeah, it seemed to hold it off a little bit. And Stefan, okay. you mentioned well, that... very interesting. Yeah, Stefan, you mentioned that the wine was the cure for corruption and why it was so important. All right. Do you guys plan to head on over to the other Burgomaster's place or sleep tonight? Or, well, I kind of want to see what they're doing and see what this, what the writing on this other person said. This other girl that was in there. See what her contract writing says before they get rid of the bodies. All right. And what about Victor and Warnock? Are you guys going to follow Vasily then? Yeah. Uh, yeah um, was I successful in waking up Mud? <laughs> yeah, he would get up and around. Um, okay. Yeah, if you guys and, want to. Yeah, I would basically I would give Victor's version of the short version of what's going on and drag Mud with us. Uh, and Trey would go as well. Um, yeah. Um, all right, yeah, you guys will head on out of this uh, tavern once again to make your way across the street. You can still see that there's these shadows inside the guest house that are moving about, uh, the lights they're on. There's a few lights on in the house, um, and you'll just see what looks to be the uh, maid girl who was um, brought the food originally when you were visiting. She's sitting in like a little, small little den area that the window looks into reading a book. But besides the light in there, there's no other lights on in the main house. Everything is outside. Um, the guest house looks to be fairly small, um, nothing overly fancy. It's got a main, uh, like living quarters and then a couple of rooms going off of it for sleeping. But as you come up maybe to the side and look through the window to get an idea of what's going on in there, you can see the Burgomaster of Vargas still in his um, nightgown, in his nightcap. Um, blood does stain him now though, as he seems to be working with these bodies, but he's covered in blood, his hands and his gown. Lydia, his wife, real sallow looking, stands back against the wall, just seems to be watching all of this. She does not have any blood or anything on her. She just watches. Um, beside her sitting in a chair is this old man. You can see his calloused hand and the scruffy white beard that he has. And definitely fits that um, look of the carpenter, or, you know, the coffin maker perhaps, like you thought. And then there's two guards in there that are standing on either side of Isaac. Isaac stands between the two bodies on the tables. There's Mila Vaj is to his left and this girl to his right. And he just stands over top of both of them. Um, doesn't really do anything, just seems to be watching. Is one other person, he looks rather similar to Victor, the Burgomaster's son, stands there as well. And he's the one, his hands are covered in this red paste that he keeps smearing across the bodies. Every now and then he'll place a hand over top of their eyes and his whole body will shake. And you can see that when he's doing this, he's, it looks like either he's chanting something or else he's speaking something, but you can't hear. It's almost like a veil of silence around the outside of this place. You can't hear a peep, be it crickets outside or words coming from within. And it's nine o'clock, so I think that'll be a good spot to save it so that Mud can join us next time. Okay. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds good. good. All right.